27? Is it 27? Hello, guys. No, 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 no. Episode. It's what? episode 22. 22. Why do I think 27? Because it's 27 minutes on the timer. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. I, uh, oh, <clears throat> hey, guys. Welcome to Playtime Podcast. And this time it's very different. We've got our man, Laurie Wilson, with us. What's going on, guys? I was going to do the Miles intro. Welcome to Playtime <laughs> Podcast. It's a beautiful day outside and we're going to get into some juicy chats. <laughs> That's very like Miles, actually. So, um, guys, welcome to episode 22. 22? 22. Welcome to episode 22. Today, Miles is away in Corsica. So, Laurie and I are gonna gonna hold the ship. Uh, Laurie's are filling it, basically filling in for miles. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna have a little chat, see see where things go. Really, we haven't really got anything planned. Uh, it's quite impromptu this podcast, so um, yeah, we'll just have a, a bit of a, an interesting conversation. And yeah, I know you've got a few things to talk about. So do you wanna do you wanna? Is this new, by the way? This is new. Yeah, wait, this is new. Sick. What was it? Thanks, mate. Um, so wait, wait, let me guess what it is before you. Uh, yeah, do you want to, guys? If you can, you can see. So yeah, this is interesting. It looks okay. 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 Yeah. So, so what, what so, do you think the meaning? So it looks like a rock with mm. uh, arrows going round and round, and then you've got a person uh, basically climbing the rock. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I'd say life swings in circles. Keep swinging. <laughs> It's not far off. It's not far off. So basically, it's a mountain. Okay. Um, so the guy is trying to climb to the peak of the mountain. The goals are at the peak of the mountain, right? Okay, yeah. But when he gets to the goal... Keep on changing. Yeah. They're, they're, essentially, you, you'll never reach your goals because they, they keep on they keep on going up, don't they? So, I like that. I um, like so yeah. That. Anyway, to get into it, um, I wanted to start with asking you something a little bit about one of my situations recently so Go as on, you know since i stopped talking to the love of my life yeah i've been on a few different dates uh, and recently i went on a date it was it was great yeah um and it was successful okay um if wait, you want to read into that wait so have you told me oh i know what this is so by successful what do you mean um i didn't go home alone that night okay. um, so and and was this a first date this was a first date and was that what you intended to do when you first went on a date with her absolutely not really no. so so basically you went on a date you're like oh i could see something going somewhere with this girl or you know you know we're vibing like let's go on a date see see what happens and then it went so well that you went back and you had sex yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah spot on spot on which to me beg the question it will become clearer now that we're a week down the line yeah how does sleeping with someone the first time you see them kind of affect the potential longevity of that relationship in your eyes yeah that's a very good question so for me right i have never pursued something long term with someone that i've slept with on the first date mm-hmm that's just how it's happened. I'm Why? not ruling it out. But for me, right, I think there's something about waiting mm -hmm. and that that sort of, that chase, that anticipation that builds it up. I think also this may come across in a bad way, but it's just the way I feel. Mm-hmm. Sometimes if I there there'll be two types of dates I go on. Okay. Explain. One type of date will be where I'm very sort of openly single mm -hmm. and I am sort of just, you know, enjoying being single basically. Sure. And for the record, that's me being open with whoever I'm going on a date with. Mm -hmm. So I'll 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 establish the ground before I go there. I'll be like, look, let's go for a drink, just just as a sort of heads up, I'm not looking for anything serious mm -hmm. right now. Like, let's see what happens sort of thing. Um, whereas a girl that I maybe see as long-term, you would progress over a longer period and build up that anticipation. Mm -hmm. I think it almost plays into the thing we were talking about yep. that we nearly got cancelled for. Oh. Do you not think? Maybe like that mindset. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm almost second guessing myself now. I'm not sure I agree. To be honest with you, to be completely honest with you, but the thing that I think, and this is kind of the question that I'm 
stewing in my head is that how much does it devalue that individual when it comes so easily um if that makes sense and i'm not just saying from the women's perspective but also from a man's perspective does it devalue the man as well when it becomes something that that happens on that first night yeah i think it it's it's way too transactional but mm. i think both men and males and females have needs and true I don't think it's necessarily it should be put on just a man as the person that's always looking for that because I know plenty of girls mm -hmm. who are down for exactly that and that's what they want from a date. It may sound... Because I feel like this this is always played on males as being the ones True. who are always looking for it, but like there's loads of girls I know that... Like friends who are looking for that. And I'm not saying... Girls, will they, will they express that though will they express that though because i think i think you're absolutely right but i think the difference between the males and females in this scenario is that men will be very open and uh they don't mind saying look i want to go on this date for some fun i want to go on this date but i think females will be like they feel the same way but maybe they don't vocalize it yes i agree and why i agree is because in this day and age if you're perceived as a player mm. as a guy it's quite it shouldn't be the case but you know everyone's like we lads like ever like it's it's perceived in more of like a i don't know you're a, a more positive light than if it was vice versa for females and that definitely shouldn't be the, pay, the case mm -hmm. and i think that's why females aren't as open about it because they don't want to come across as that i agree i know lots of girls who are very like sexually liberal and i really rate it when they're just open about mm -hmm. it i think that's really refreshing mm -hmm. and i think that's like how everyone should be and guys shouldn't be the only ones who can be open about it mm -hmm. i'm with you i actually really agree with that and um i wanted to ask a question this is actually kind of linked to the scenario that i'm in at the moment yeah. and i think that i've come up with the perfect equation for when you don't like a girl like that okay so i wanted to ask you firstly how do you know so say you're in a relationship or a situation with a girl you've been yeah. with dates and you're like how do i know if i really like this girl long term or if it's just yeah. a bit of a fling what do you think what's your mechanism to to understand that look so this is actually quite a difficult question because what i said to your first question mm. is i i think i wasn't being completely truthful there because <laughs> i because i when i think about it the way i approach dating in general mm. is i never actively look for a relationship or someone for something serious with i'm i i always go into it with an open mind approach anything with an open mind and when i'm single i'm i'm dating to go and have fun with someone mm. and if we get on really well and things progress it might turn into something mm. um so in answer to your second question it really depends on how the date goes okay. and how we vibe mm. and um yeah I don't have like t uh, while I did say I'll divide it into two t two separate types of girls one that I want to have fun with another. I think I approach all dates in the same way but it just depends how we get on yeah yeah how, what about you so I'm with you I think I'll go into it with the same mindset but in terms of basically so what happened I went on this date the date was great whatever it was successful and then afterwards I was kind of caught in two minds and I was like I don't know what to do about this situation I'm not sure how I'm feeling sorry this is the date where you went back with her correct okay so so sorry you the next day you started to be like overthink it maybe do you mean a little bit so um we went out on the Friday yeah and then she was like oh can we do something on the Sunday Oh, wow, that's a lot. And uh, it was the Saturday. I woke up on the Saturday morning. She left, whatever. And yeah. I, I uh, messaged her a few hours later. And I was just like, I, I can't do I can't do tomorrow. So anyway, I was thinking about it. And then I was like, how do I know if I like this girl in terms of like a long-term thing or whether it's just more of a uh, friendship um, with, with some fun and stuff like that? And then I was like, would I be annoyed if I went on Instagram and I saw that she was with someone else, another boy? I was like, I wouldn't care. And that for me is the biggest indicator of whether you like someone like that or not. So if I'm thinking about someone that I really like and I go on Instagram a few days after I went on a date with them and they're with someone else, I'm fuming. In what capacity though? 
So in terms of, let's say you go on a date, it's successful, same situation. And then a few days later, she's out on another date. No, I would... Oh, date. That's what I meant. In what capacity do you see her on? So it's basically if you see her on another date with someone else. Yeah. But she wouldn't do that on Instagram anyway, right? No, absolutely not. But I'm just thinking like, it's, like you, it's more of an or, imagination or you, thing. Do you know what I mean? Or do you, or do, you do that with dates? <laughs> no. You put it on Instagram. Like, yeah, I want to date with someone. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Think, finger now in the corner of the photo. <laughs> No, absolutely not. But it's more of like an imagination thing. Do you know what I mean? Like if you yeah. go on a date with someone, you imagine, oh, if they were with someone else or if they sat me off and they pursued things with someone else, would I care? Mm. If the answer is no, it's probably not the situation for you. Yes, I agree with what you're saying. <clears throat> I don't agree with what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't because first up, if I had, I don't think I've ever been on one date with someone and then if they'd be on a date with someone else after that, I don't think you're in your right to you're be not. like in a, so do you, so do you feel like you fall quite fast then? I feel like I fall quite fast, but very infrequently. Because that would strike me as falling very fast because you've met her once. Yeah, of course. So this is what I'm saying. But um, I say I fall fast, but very infrequently. So I yeah. might fall fast for someone, but then... So so you've fallen in love? What, with this girl? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's well, lovely. Well so, uh, <laughs> well, so as in you were like... So the point of this story is if you saw her with someone else, you wouldn't give her care. <laughs> Fucking hell. No, and that oh, was the indicator for me. That, if you're listening, sorry. Uh, no, we've come up with uh, <laughs> with an agreement, so we're, we're fine. Oh, so you're friends with benefits now? Fuck buddies. Yes. <laughs> Decent, mate. Well, look, mate. Uh, Miles and I have spoken about this scenario quite a few times, actually. On and Miles' stance, right, if I just impersonate him for a second, is that it's okay, it's a good thing, it's healthy, as long as you're transparent from the beginning. Exactly, and that's how I feel about it as well. Really? 100%. So have mate. you had a successful friends with benefits situationship? Yes. You have? Very. Over how long? Must have been about three months. Three months? Yeah. And why did it end? Um, <laughs> I had other engagements to attend to <laughs> right. more serious engagements yeah <laughs> no, no no as in i look it was when i went on love island uh, so it was just for that okay anyway I, how did she feel about that uh so the way it went right was we were very uh it, it was sort of like we kind of put both our cards on the table very early, literally mm. on the second date. We were on the first date, it was all right. Second date, we were just like very open about where we're both at. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of came to the conclusion that like, look, neither of us want like a relationship or anything right now. Let's just like enjoy. Mm -hmm. um, she was also into some pretty mad shit. Um, oh, is this the... Yeah, she she liked to go to like uh, sex parties and stuff like okay. that. Um, and other wild shit but anyway um we yeah we spent a lot of time together and i actually got on with her really mm. really well um and we started seeing her for like three months and it was a fucking great setup mm. because it's kind of like <laughs> talk me through this it's, all, it's all the good things <laughs> without getting super in yeah. deep when you're not in a place to be in that obviously when you're in a place to get into a relationship it's really nice sure but when you're not there it's nice to have something like that without the strings attached mm -hmm. anyway it got to the stage where i was about to go i told her and then she was like yeah i kind of like you and then i kind of to be to be fair i kind of felt the same but it would was, that it not was, indicate then that the friends with benefits is not successful that's what i mean so it kind of materialized into probably something more than that by the end mm. And it was really bad timing. And But the thing is, you shouldn't have to have something like that bring on that conversation. Mm -hmm. So maybe we both weren't being mature about our emotions. Mm. But maybe, or maybe it's just factual that it's hard to sleep with someone over a three-month period and not catch any feelings for them if you get on with them. Yeah, yeah. Um, Do you believe that if you are seeing the right person in terms of the right person being like relationship, wifey, whatever you want to call it, regardless of the situation that you find yourselves in, you'll 
find a way to make it work. As in you'll bend over backwards to make things work even though it shouldn't. Yeah. So let's say maybe the situation is really hard. One of you's just come out of a relationship, long-term relationship. Yeah. One of you is, I don't know, just lost your job. Or, do you know what I mean? Like the circumstances are really hard, but you find yourself with this person. You're like, you know what? This is someone that I view as being a partner long-term. Do you think regardless of that circumstance you find yourself in, you make it work? Or do you think sometimes the circumstance is too hard? Circumstances too hard. I really? think, yes, it needs to be... I, I think with relationships, it's uh, people underestimate the the sort of like importance of timing for both parties. Agreed. And um, I personally am the type of person who has in the past bent over backwards to make stuff work, even though I know that it wouldn't be good timing wise. You're fighting a losing battle. Yeah. And that's not a healthy position to be in because mm. it's, you know, it's not the right timing and couldn't probably materialize so you're kind of investing mm -hmm. in someone and going down the line mm -hmm. deeper um mm -hmm. when really it's better to be just like open and mature about it and just be like look this isn't going to go there um what, what do you think i um i actually agree with you i i definitely agree with you i think sometimes there are things in life that you can't control right sometimes life happens and at the end of the day i think it's better to like you say take that mature approach and say look it's not going to work for me right now and yeah. i'll come on to the, the emphasis on the right now in a minute when i ask you a question but sometimes it's just the, better to by the way mate, I'm, I'm liking like your questions i feel like i'm the, in, be the person being interviewed here good that's uh yeah. that's my role mate yeah, i'm an interviewer yeah. so yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm doing my job yeah, yeah. Um, by the way check out laurie's podcast if yeah you haven't do, read it. do what's it called again past present future past present future yeah so link in bio <laughs> <laughs> sorry but, yeah no 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 so uh, the reason i emphasize emphasized on right now is i wanted to ask you yeah that relationship's great it's the wifey it's the long-term partner stuff like this and you've said that sometimes circumstance it can be too tough to move through does that stop it from working after that circumstance has passed? Um, so scenario, you meet someone, yeah. you go on a few days, you're like, this is amazing. Like, I can see myself falling in love with you. I can see myself getting married, having kids, all this stuff. Or like you go on four or five dates and that's what you're thinking in your head. But you know deep down the circumstance is too hard to get through. Mm. So you say, it's not going to work right now. Let's be mature about it. Can you revisit it in six months, 12 months? Or do you think that it's over? Yes, but I think it's, I haven't been in that scenario, but I, I could imagine it would be very, very difficult to just be like, let's revisit. Really? Why? Because you're enjoying something so much and you want it to work. It it, it goes back to what I was saying about you sh if you can take a really mature approach about it and mm. be sort of like, um, yeah, there with it. What What, what do you think? uh i don't know what i think i know what i hope um oh so because so you you've basically taken that approach with a girl haven't you i've tried to mate yeah so the talk situation us, is that it. yeah so i met the love of my life my my future wife at the beginning of the year um <laughs> we went on quite a few dates uh probably over the period of maybe like six weeks yeah. something like that yeah I, could, and, I remember because basically Obviously, we see Laurie every Sunday. Yeah, yeah. And I remember you talking about it. And I was like, fuck, he really likes it. Yeah. Me. If you're watching, you know who you are. There's only one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was it was really, really great. And to be honest with you, I was in a position where my circumstance was great. I just moved to London. My last relationship was three years ago. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Hers is very different. Like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. met her 10 days after she was out of like a three and a half year relationship. Yeah. Still had a flat with her ex, all this sort of stuff. So, it wasn't ideal. So, in the back of my mind, I knew right now this is never going to materialize into what I want it to materialize into. But I am still hopeful that 6, 12, 18, 24, 36 months down the line that it might happen. But that's why I wanted to ask you about your thoughts because I do understand kind of like once you've parked something, which even over that six week period was so great, like, can you, can you revisit? I think the scenario, the way you've played it is perfect. And mm. I think you couldn't have done it any better than you have. So what will be, will be what, will, like, if, if it's meant to be, it will come to you. That's my thoughts on it. And that's my thoughts with any situation yeah. with um, a girl. So this is actually a really good point. And I'll be honest with you. So the last message I sent her, 
it was dictated by a playtime episode and you were basically saying exactly that i was actually editing the episode and you were saying that you think you need to let things progress naturally um, and to materialize how they will and i was thinking yeah i actually really agree with that and it's powerful to be able to say to someone look if it's meant to be it will be so let's just leave it at that and that's essentially the last message that i sent to her but at what point do you have to act? Because it's like the same thing with like manifestation and acting and stuff like that. It's a similar thing, isn't it? It's like, yeah, you can speak into existence, you can do all this stuff, but at some point action needs to be taken, otherwise it will never happen. So at what point do you stop trusting in that it will happen naturally and saying, right, fuck it, I need to reach out? I think it's not, uh, that comes across as it being, you being extremely passive in the situation. I think with where you're at, she knows where your head's at you've you've verbalized that and i think you can only leave it to her for the time being and and that whole th whole mindset of like what's meant to be will come to you it's not it's also adopting the approach of like you shouldn't be thinking about it in terms of like what her being the thing that should come to you mm. you should be more open about it like yeah, you really like her, but if she doesn't come back to you, there's fucking plenty of other girls that yeah. that would want to come for you as well. Because yeah. at the moment, it seems seems like you're framing it in a way where she's the one, mate. Very much so. I yeah. mean, so yeah, to explain to go into the recent story a bit more. So I've been on, I think, four dates over like the last four or five weeks, which for me, that's good success for for me. By the way, I've probably. Yeah more dates over the last five weeks than I've been on the last five years. Love that, man. Um, Mate, I remember when we first started filming together, I swear you weren't dating much at all. Not at all, mate. It's mate, not really have, like, have you been, so where I used to you, live. Me and Miles been rubbing off on you. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it, mate. So all my hinge photos are with Miles and yourself and they come Probably out. <laughs> no, but um, I just think it's not the done thing where I'm from, where I used what, to live. Date? Well, it's just what, more like what, everyone like, knows everyone. Do you know what I mean? You know someone that's what, slept so with this girl and your so, friends slept with that girl and you've slept with the same girl. So it's all, and, all a bit incestuous. Yeah, without a better word, it's, it's probably pretty <laughs> accurate, to be fair. Um, but do you know what I mean? It's like you're not going to go on a date with this girl that you know five blokes that have taken her out or yeah. done other things. So Wait, so that like wait, sounds like a very small... Sounds like, small. Sounds like you live in a tribal village somewhere. <laughs> It's not quite that, but put it this way. If I went into like the one bar, which is the closest thing to a club in yeah. the town where I'm from, I would yeah. know 90% of the population. Okay. So, yeah, you can... Fine. So you're venturing outside of, of the tribal lands. <laughs> exactly that. Exactly that. Um, so, yeah, anyway, so I've been on these dates yeah. um, after seeing the one. And every single date that I've been on since... I've just been like, this is great, but I wish it was the other person sat across from me. Yeah, I, it's... I To be honest with you, mate, I haven't actually ever been in a situation where I've had that. I think, for me, I'm more... I don't know. Have you ever had that situation whilst being intimate? What, what do you mean? Where you've wished it was someone else. No, I know Miles has had that. Really? Yeah, yeah. He, I think he's spoken about it before. Um, he's been like, oh, I, I thought it was... Oh, oh yes. Yeah yeah, 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 I remember. But I don't know. I don't think I've been in that scenario. I think I'm quite good at drawing a line yeah. when something's not on. I'm mm -hmm. kind of like, I'm quite all or nothing. Yeah. So, I, I yeah, it's, it sounds like a difficult one, to, difficult situation to be in. But also, mate, it kind of sounds like this girl mm. is leaving things too open for you or perhaps you're leaving things too open for her and it's not put you in the best mindset for it, no? Because from my eyes, I'd just be like, it's almost like you're saying I'm here when you're ready, right? Yeah. And I don't, I personally, I'm not saying it's the, the right or wrong thing to do but personally mm. i would take an approach of like look it's not meant to be now but i might not be here because 
there's fucking True. loads of other, because at the moment it's almost like it gives you more power you need to restore the power if that makes sense yeah, yeah. to be in a way more like you're owning the situation yeah, you're yeah, controlling yeah. it as opposed to basically being subject to whether she's going to be around or not sure does that make sense no i agree with you and that's how i would personally approach it it's not necessarily the right way but i just think it mean that you have a way more optimistic approach about things moving mm -hmm. forward and mm -hmm. it probably will spur her more to take action i think yeah maybe that sounds like i'm fucking manipulative as a person or slightly calculated but that's, no, ju that's but just how i play things no i agree with you and i think you're right it gives us an incentive right doesn't it? it's the same in life and in general it's like if you think at some point the thing that you want is going to be taken away from you you're more likely to act yeah and it's it's basically at no stage do you want to be just there available for someone at mm. any point like your value is much higher than that true. not not that you're devaluing yourself i'm making it out no as if, it's it's true though i'm making it out as if you're like you know worthless yeah <laughs> but i do think it's better to have a a more sort of assertive mindset mm. and more sort of if you don't fucking want me now, there's lots of fucking other people that do. Yeah. So you can come back to me when you're ready mm. and I might not be available and that's on you. Yeah. Fuck. Do you want to send a quick message? <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you get what I mean? No, no, no. I 100% I agree. 100% agree. And uh, it's a bit of food for thought for the future. Yeah. So going back to the original question, are there... What, what are your thoughts on... Um, sleeping with a girl on the first date. Because look, for me, right, I haven't ever had a scenario where I have stepped on the first date and it progressed into something a bit more serious. But yeah, like I said, it's... Uh, I don't know if it would affect. For me, it's, it's a tough one because my my only ever serious relationship, I, I slept with her the first night that I saw her, but... <laughs> It was building up over a period of months, like to get that to secure that date. I had to put in oh work, right, 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 right. Um, and we worked together. So I, I knew her for an extended period right, of time before different. that happened. Whereas with the recent situation, I uh, matched on Hinge on Thursday night, secured the digits on Thursday night, texting throughout the day on Friday, date on Friday, slept with Friday night. Wow. That's that's some that's some good it's good shift, isn't it? Good progression. Yeah, man. thanks, mate. Um, but fast. yeah, that's too fast. Um, yeah. I would say so. Yeah, I think in that sense, it's just like it kind of goes back to the whole question of like, why do we as the human population want things that we can't have, and when that thing comes too easily, does it put you off? And also, is there an element of PNC or post nut clarity. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a real thing? So with the post nut clarity thing, for anyone who's needs clarification what it is, <laughs> do you want to explain? Uh, yeah, so I guess it uh, is what it says on the tin. So it's you finish, uh, <laughs> you nut, ejaculate, another word for it. Um, you finish, you climax, and then you have a sense of clarity. So how are you feeling? Why did you do this? Yeah. Uh, what is the situation essentially? And, and your mindset is very different after you've uh, indulged in that act. What? And do you feel like that's the case for you quite often? Uh, <laughs> not always, not always, yeah. <laughs> not always. But I think, yeah, I think there is definitely an element of truth in it. Yeah. Um, I mean, even if you reference like sometimes say if you're like, I'm tempted to text this girl that I've had previous relations with, let me just help myself out. And once you've helped yourself out, you're less likely to to send that text. So I think there is an element of, of post-night clarity. You, well, yeah, it completely depends on what you're after really, isn't it? And what she's after. Like, I think as we discussed earlier in the podcast, if both parties are sort of just, mm. you know, like very casually dating, having fun, then you're bound to have that. But how often has it happened to you where you've slept with someone yeah, and seconds after you finish, you've been like, fuck this. 
I can't wait to book the Uber. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody ass bit half, right? Um, did you do that? No. No. <laughs> um, it doesn't happen that regularly. Well, mm. <laughs> it, re- it really depends, mate. Like, <clears throat> I think it's happened. Look, let's let's be real. We've all had one night stands. It's happened to me in those scenarios. It's probably happened, by the way, for both parties. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For 100%. Me. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Not of you. You're, no, no. Uh, just, of course it's happened for both parties. Yeah. Um, I think that... Yeah, it's it's not as I feel like there's a lot of guys who will go out and basically wanting to have sex with someone mm. and abs- go like absolute dive to like sleep with someone. <laughs> and that's probably more the case. Mm. But if well, you do the rounds around the uh, the bar at the end of the yeah, night, yeah. But if you, if can... you if you maintain a high quality throughout, it's probably less than <laughs> <laughs> Are you referencing yourself here? Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay. What would you say, um, I hate doing the ratings, but if you were to average out your your rating <laughs> across the Mate, plethora I, of females that you've um, had intimate relationships with, what would you say is the average Look, rating? mate, I'm, I'm not one to um, <laughs> blow my own trumpet, nor am I one to kiss and tell, but let's just say I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy. Yeah, what about you? I'm happy as well. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'm, I'm happy. Okay, so I've got another thing to discuss. So okay. I was listening to a Chris Williamson podcast the other day, and shock, <laughs> shock. Yeah, I, I reference Chris Chris Williamson in almost every podcast, and um, we he was talking about I forget who the guest was, but he was talking about um, how monogamous relationships are effectively only really a thing because of it's a societal norm right Mm -hmm. i get it obviously everyone's supposed to the purpose on a very sort of like basic level of a human being is to reproduce right Mm. but to actually be in a monogamous like monogamous relationship probably isn't Mm -hmm. on a a, like basic caveman level Mm -hmm. (laughs) like you know back in the day (laughs) yeah guys would probably yeah just try and sure. have sex with as many women as possible to reproduce as much as possible sure. and the the women would do the same anyway that's sort of breaking it back to the bare bones do you think because of how everything's framed nowadays that monogamous relationships are just a thing because of that or do you think that oh, sorry i'm not framing it right do you think monogamous relationships are uh work do you think do you think it's a thing that's sort of just like been painted? So essentially, do I think that people enter into those relationships because it's the norm, it's what's expected, rather than it's because they want to? Yeah, like, and does does that sort of setup work? Yeah, I think I, I think it works. I think well, you only really have to look at the success rates of of marriages, really, don't you, to see whether it are works they, or not. Are they fucking low though? They are. They are low. Um, let's search this up. Let's search this up. I think it's like, what is it? Like 40%, something like that? I think it's fucking low. Marriage success rate. Let's have a look. That's not right. <laughs> Completely doesn't support my... <laughs> what is it? Oh, no, 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 no. The first six I read was out of a thousand people, only seven people divorced in 2019. That's bollocks. But is that within the year of their marriage? Uh, wait, wait, wait. This, this, so, this, yes. this, is a, this is a proper statistic here. It's 42%. What did I say? Yeah, well done. You've been, you've been doing your research. Yep. Which is quite low. But, yeah. Is it low, I, though? Look, for me, I'm just playing devil's advocate. I fully so are you, am on board. You, you want the caveman approach. You just want to go <laughs> and sow your seed with as many women as possible. That's essentially what you're saying. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. I Look, I'm playing devil's advocate. I actually completely agree with monogamy. And I personally couldn't be in like an open relationship. Absolutely that, not. That's ultimately what yeah. a non-monogamous relationship is. 100%. Right? I'm, I'm, um, I'm I, far too jealous. There is no way I could do it. Um, but there's plenty of people that do do it. And it's just an interesting thing, really, isn't it? 
Yeah, I guess it goes back to like what your idea of success is, right? Like if your idea of success is to have that family and to be with one person, then great, you need to go down that route. But if it's just to have fun, to enjoy each other's bodies, then there's different routes, right? So I don't think there's a, a one size fits all or a correct answer. I just think it's individual. But for me, personally speaking, yeah, I need I need one partner and a family and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I think we can both agree on that. That was that was a that was a good topic. Yeah, well done, mate. Well done. Yeah. Really uh, pulled that out. I wanted to ask you something earlier. Um, so you mentioned you were happy with uh, the calibre of people that you've been with. Yeah, is that as a result of you being a celebrity? No, I was. I've always had that mindset from. Oh really? Yeah. I just. What list celebrity do you reckon you are? I'm not, a I'm, I'm not or, a celebrity, mate. Are you not on the list? No, mate. No? I, I don't. Like, I'm just not, mate. Okay, the reason um, I wanted to ask you is because I wanted to see, how do you feel? It probably happens every now and again when someone comes up to you and you're on a night out and they say, oh, Charlie, can I, can I have a photo? Or How do you feel in that moment? Uh, it's, I, I, I think it's quite like, it's quite nice. Yeah. It's quite humbling. Obviously, I'm just a bit like, why the fuck do you want a photo of me? <laughs> um <laughs> but obviously if anyone ever asks i'm like of course yeah um but yeah i mean i'm not not like famous so that's why it's just a bit funny it's just like really yeah <laughs> so a lot of the time i'm like are you taking the piss so do you think your attitude towards it would change if you were some a-list superstar and every five seconds you're getting asked for photos and you're out with your girlfriend you're just trying to enjoy your evening and there's people coming up to you oh can i can't grab a photo can i grab a photo 100 percent. i think um john cena mm. He sometimes goes to our gym in London when he comes oh, to the really? UK and he's mad famous. And I actually went up to him and I was like, hey, mate, I'm so sorry. I know you probably get this all the time, but can I get a photo? Massive fan. Um, and he was like, yeah, turned around, smiled, gave it back to me and then just turned around and walked away. <laughs> and you can just tell he was just dead inside from people asking that question. Yeah. But... It's yeah, a bit I, sad really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's very sad. I, I felt bad for even asking him after yeah. that. Yeah um because it's just a very fake sort of put on yeah, thing yeah yeah but he's he's being nice but he's just done with it yeah but on the contrary if someone came up to me and asked me for a photo when i was on a date i mean i wouldn't mind i'd be like <laughs> you probably love it seeing this see, it happens <laughs> all the time all the time no but it doesn't happen to me right but i can see why it's it would be frustrating for someone who's like mm. actually famous yeah yeah i just wanted to ask you because like i think it's an interesting thing like how should you treat quote-unquote celebrities because at the end of the day they're just normal people right and i had a scenario the other night when i was actually out on this day um i was at ronnie scott's the jazz club and uh, so lovely place by the way uh, really really good and i saw this actor i won't say who it was but top boy actor uh pretty famous really nice guy and uh i'm a big fan like i don't really watch films but this Kano? guy no uh this guy he's he's my, like my favorite actor so anyway i As saw in, him uh what's he called the guy who plays uh the bigger the older brother i don't know yeah <laughs> he he's a proper don yeah um so anyway i'm a who big was he on fan a date with? who was he on a date with what was the girl like i don't know she was she was nice what she look like i don't know mate, mate so look he's, he's not gonna fucking listen to this i might tag him in the reel <laughs> no go on go on um you can leave it out no I, I don't know who it was but no, no, but like, what did she look like uh caramel skin yeah um big <laughs> yeah um pretty yeah. nice where, where, quite were short. You, where were you again sorry ronnie scott's ronnie scott's nice um but anyway so I, i'm with the girl that i was with yeah and he walked past me and i was i was a little bit drunk and i was like i turned around and i was like mate i was like can i get a photo i was like really big fan or whatever and he was like he was like yeah yeah yeah, of course yeah and then i kind of had that like split second bit of clarity uh not post nut in this uh in this situation or maybe it was um <laughs> And I was just like, actually, mate, I was like, you know what, like, 
just enjoy your evening. You're out with your girlfriend. I'm I'm sorry for asking. Just go and enjoy your evening. He was like, oh, bro, thank you so much. Like, you don't know how much that means to me, this, that, and the other. We ended up having a bit of a chat. And then I went down to the toilet. We were leaving. I came back up and he was there waiting when I came out of the toilet. And he's like, bro, thank you so much. This, that, and the other. Um, Did you get a photo at the end? No, I didn't. I didn't ask. I probably, after the second uh, interaction, I probably could have quite easily. But yeah, it was just... Um, it was actually really nice. I think he just kind of appreciated being treated as more than a human. Ra than... Rather than just uh, another photo. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think there's a time and a place, right? Like he's out of his girlfriend. It's like 2 a.m. Like he doesn't want that. Like no. maybe if I saw him on the, on the street or something, it would be a bit different. Um, so yeah, I just think, and as well, and I think one thing that I said to him and guys watch this space, but I think I said to him that, I have like ambitions of being well known um, for my individual crafts. And when I do get to that place, I hope that people treat me like I ended up treating him rather than how I was going to treat him initially. Um, yeah, that's fair, mate. That's that's actually a really nice story. Thanks. Because a, a, <laughs> a lot of people definitely would just get the fur and then just be like, thanks, bye. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so yeah, mate, um, watch this space. Don't treat spice. don't treat Laurie like that when he gets famous. <laughs> or, or treat me like it. And see well, what he is famous, but yeah. when he gets more famous. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm getting there, guys. I'm getting there. Um but yeah, fair mate. That's that's an interesting one. Anyway, enough about me. Um you've spoken a lot about me, what I'm doing at the moment. What's going on with Charlie? What's going on in the world of, of Charlie? Uh what's going on at the moment, mate? Nothing major to report, if I'm honest. Um when this uh, comes out, though, correct, your presence on Made in Chelsea will be stronger, right? Yes, it would have. Uh, well, it's actually going to air the first one this evening, I think. This evening? Tomorrow evening. How are you uh, feeling about it? Yeah, good, man. Um, I mean, I'm, like, sort of getting involved back end of the series, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's good, man. Uh, got that going on. What else has been going on? How has... Um, being on the show because obviously it's reality tv right so it's yeah. about your life yeah how has being on the show affected your personal life so your life outside of tv um well my personal life is very intertwined with what's actually happening on the show mm -hmm. or was or is okay um you know because i'm very very close with miles mm -hmm. we do look i'm i'm actually a very busy guy so like in the week i don't have much time to do anything and then sure. on the weekend i'll see miles most of the weekend for both the podcast and socially mm. um and yeah it's very intertwined so i don't think it's massively impacts anything it's just shining more of a light on it mm -hmm. um so yeah it hasn't made any real impact yet if i'm honest really no what what um what sort of observation would you make um i'm just trying to gauge i guess how much you would second guess scenarios um in real life and be like like how much of this is linked to the program and how much of this is real real life obviously it's real life but you know what i mean um in terms of like and if something happens, are you second guessing? Like, oh, is this happening um, because it's linked to the show or is this happening in real life? And I guess for me, I think that would bring on like a lot of anxiety. Yeah, I think if you're, I don't think there's really been that many crossovers there. <laughs> I guess there was a, a minor crossover with Miles and I, mm. um, but that's all been sort of resolved. Mm. Um <laughs> And um, yeah, we there was definitely a period where Miles and I were a bit like we didn't know how to sort of interact. navigate both. Yeah, I think Miles found it very weird because he's mm. used to not having his close mates on there, mm. and then the scenario that played out m was like a bit, a bit strange. Mm. But we're all good now. Like, yeah. Um, what well, me and Miles are going to do a podcast on actually. But um, and we'll go into more detail. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's good, man. Like, um, it's just another thing to add to the to the bow. Is that a saying? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, String to the bye. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's good fun as well. I enjoy it. So it's good, man. Um, on a more off-topic note, mm-hmm. very random one. Mm-hmm. So I was walking through the park the other day, and um, there was a girl with her dog. Okay, and I was like can I stroke your dog? <laughs> Is that a weird thing to do? Um, do you think you should ask You're going to have to paint the picture a bit better. <laughs> I mean, if it's just like no eye contact's been made and you just walk up, stroll up, because can when, I stroke your dog? Because when I, like- I, I was with someone at the time and they are like, that's a fucking weird thing to say. Like, just fucking stroke her dog. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think it's that different, but I think it's like, like if I'm, I'm imagining it in my head and you're walking through the park and you've kind of caught eyes and then the dog's like by your feet and you look up and you're like, oh, can I show your dog? Like, that's pretty normal. But I think if you just swan over to someone, you walk directly, can I show your dog? Bit, look, bit I, there was a really cute dog and I was like, you could tell I really wanted to go over and stroke it, but I didn't know whether to just go in and then the girl turn around and be like, Ugh. or whether I just say like, hey, can I stroke your dog? But then it sounds a bit weird saying that, doesn't it? Well, I think the indicator of whether it was the right thing to do or not was the outcome. So what happened? I asked her. Yeah? I didn't think it was weird at all. And, and then the person I was with was like, that was fucking weird. What did she say though? She was like, Haha, yeah. <laughs> like, like weird, awkward. No, I think if I, you look, you should always just, uh, maybe it's something to do with like the way you phrase it. Where you say, can I stroke your dog? <laughs> sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? Maybe I say, hey, can I, Say hello to your dog. Mm. Maybe just miss out altogether. Maybe maybe, I'm, maybe I'm overthinking this. Yeah, maybe a little bit. <laughs> I think though her stance on it would probably be driven by her assumption of why you want to stroke the dog, though. Because what just thinks that I'm trying to hit on her? Yes. Do you th- look? Do you think that I sometimes see guys? Just fucking hitting on everyone. Yes. Do you know guys like that? Yes. <laughs> and I think this is very similar to, I know you discussed with Miles on a previous episode, like approaching uh, girls in the gym or even just having like a normal human conversation and yeah. a normal human conversation with someone in a gym scenario is now seen as like, you're just a fucking weirdo when really it's just real life and you're just having a conversation. Mm. And I think those people that you just referenced that are a bit weird and they hit on everyone, they ruin it for everyone else because those people give people like you a bad name. Maybe, maybe you just want to stroke that dog, but because she's had five other men come out, oh, can I stroke, oh, like, can I grab a call? Like, do you know what I mean? And just instantly yeah. go into that mode. Her um, initial thoughts as soon as she sees you walking over to that dog is, oh, for fuck's sake, here we go again. Well, I guess uh, that's the that's the issue with having a cute dog, isn't it? Mm, it is. But um, Is it calculated? That's the question. Yeah, well, I mean, I know I've... Uh, I've walked around with a few puppies before, and I tell you what, it attracts so many, so many girls. Really, Miles is actually about to get a puppy. Is he? Yeah. So I'm obviously going to be wow. Going to be borrowing that here and there. Nice. Um, <laughs> he's planning on it anyway. I don't know if it'll happen. I just don't think he can look after a puppy no. in his flat. No. I reckon. I also think Miles. I know you're not here to defend yourself, but I just, I just think the dog's going to die, mate. Um, I, I don't think you're cut out for it, mate. Like. I reckon the dog's going to be in your flat and he'll just like eat some... Lion's prep. <laughs> yeah, he'll eat a bit of lion's prep or it'll like, I don't know, eat a bit of a selfie light or... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, something like that. And um, next thing you know, you just have like a dead puppy. <laughs> Man, you can't say that. Well, I mean, RSPCA will leave a number underneath. Um look man i'm just being honest Fair enough. I, i'll be checking in for sure um miles, if you're i watching. might walk in one day and miles, miles is just walking around and be like, for fuck's sake i killed the puppy um <laughs> <laughs> no 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 i no i think miles would be a good dad a <laughs> good dad yeah dad Dog yeah. dad yeah yeah wow i mean he doesn't really need too much help with um attracting females but it can't hurt he I doesn't guess. he doesn't mm. doesn't at all um how are you in time mate I think we're doing 
It's doing good. How far are we in? We've done 50, 50 minutes. Very good, very good. Solid. Is there anything else we were going to talk about today? I don't think so, you know. Um, I think, um, where are my notes? We can, we kind of just call it right there, unless we've got anything else to talk about, really. No, I think that's, um, that's solid. That's yeah. good. Lovely to have you on, mate. Um, thank you so much for filling in for Miles. A great guest. Um, thank you guys as well for watching. Um, really appreciate all the love and support. And yeah, please also subscribe to Patreon, YouTube, Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. We mm. appreciate the love. Any like five star ratings, comments, loves, any engagement in general is just really appreciated uh, to help us on our journey. Um, and yeah. Hope you all have a lovely week and we will see you next week. Thanks, guys. See you later.